Welcome back everybody. Uh, today we're going to be creating a private NuGet package that you can share with, our, with amongst your team without uh, giving away all your company's intellectual pop property to the rest of the internet. So let's get started. Right, so what I've got here, I've effectively got two solutions. I've got a uh, class library that just has a single class that with one method that formats some um, a time in uh, relative to wherever we are now. So you give it a time and then it, it says this time happened a few seconds ago or a few months ago or uh, three years ago, whatever it is. Um, and then we've got a secondary application that's just, um, just a console application that just, and then it's going to write out a message when this has happened. Um, so what we want to do is we want to have this application use our, our class library. So uh, what you can do is um, we can create a reference to that project. I can go here and say add a reference. I can go and browse for it. And I can go and find that DLL and say, there's my common utilities project. And now at this point, I can actually go and uh, reference my uh, method. I can say new time span format. Uh, time span formatter. There it is. It's found it. No problem. And I could uh, go and uh, swap this out and say formatter dot to relative time span and then pass my Celsius variable here. And this should work completely fine. Um, the problem with this approach is it works just great if I'm a sole developer working by myself and I'm the only one that's ever going to use my class library. But typically when you're working in a team, um, we, you would push this to a repo and have one of your colleagues or team members uh, uh, pull that down again. The problem with this approach is if we go and have a look at the assembly or the reference that we've created over here, we're going to look at the details. You'll see that Rider has, and Visual Studio does the same thing, actually goes and creates a absolute reference to the location of this on my hard drive, which um, is not good. It's going to cause things to break when the, the colleague pulls it down. So a better solution is for us to create one of these private NuGet packages, which we can um, easily share and update with our colleagues. Um, so let's go and do that. So I'm going to delete this reference. This is going to moan. Um, cool. So step one is uh, let's go and change some of the details for our library. It's pretty straightforward. We just open up the properties. Uh, we're going to NuGet over here, and there's just a checkbox here to say generate the NuGet package whenever this is built. Um, I'm going to change some of these here. I'm going to just set the author. Um, hello. Set the author. Um, this description. Uh, should you would think would be describing what our package does. However, um, where we're going to be hosting this, which is GitHub, it, they don't seem to use this. Um, don't ask me why. Uh, not used by GitHub. I don't know why. Um, and there's a, a bunch of other properties here which you can set. For example, the tags would be if this was a, a public package that you'd put on nuget.org, you'd want to set your tag so that it can be found. Because this is private, we don't need to worry about that. What is worth noting is, um, is the version number. I generally like to keep my version number and my assembly number the same and the file version. So if I make a change and I increment one, I will I typically increment all three of those. Um, that's it. We're going to click OK. So we can go and edit a few more properties manually that aren't uh, in that dialog. I can go into uh, edit this csproj file. And this description, though not used by GitHub, um, there is a description property that GitHub does, does use called uh, package description. And I'm going to say this. Cool. Um, right, so that being said, uh, let's make sure our project builds. Go and have a look at the bin folder in our release. You'll see now we, we've actually generated that NuGet package. This is the file that we're going to be pushing up to our hosting repository. In our case, it's going to be GitHub. 
Okay, what we need to do is we need to create that config file now to tell um, our IDE or, or to, to give instructions on how and where we're going to upload this to. So we're going to create, call this nuget.config. You're going to open this in your favorite editor. In my case, it's going to be um, Visual Studio Code. Right, and we got a fixed template for this, which I'm just going to copy in here. Um, and this XML, there's just three properties we need to set here. We need to set the namespace, which will be a portion of our URL for uh, where the package is going to reside, uh, the username and the password or the token that we are going, that the system is going to use to actually log into uh, GitHub. Right, so now we're going to swap over to GitHub and uh, we're going to create the uh, login credentials that uh, our package is or our config file is going to need. Right, so uh, we've logged into GitHub with our account. I'm going to go down to settings and developer settings here at the bottom. I'm going to go to personal access tokens. I'm going to use the classic variety and I'm going to say generate new token, new classic token. And I'm going to just call this uh, token for package just for now, for the sake of it. We can set the expiration date to whatever we want. Um, there's really only two important properties that need to be set here. The one is the read write access, and the other is delete packages. We generate the token. Here's our token. I'm going to copy this to the clipboard then head back to our config file and I'm going to replace this with this here. Um, we're going to set the username. Our username is the, will be whatever we normally log into GitHub with. In my case, it's just Mark Inman. Um, and our namespace again is going to be the namespace of the, uh, your, your GitHub namespace. So, in my case, it's this one up here, just Mark Inman. So let's go and do that. Okay, going to save this. Right, so what we need to do now is we need to upload it to uh, GitHub. Easiest way to do this is using a terminal command. I'm going to use git bash. Right, and let's just get the name here. So it's going to be NuGet. Sorry going to be .NET NuGet push uh, the name of our package, which is common utilities 1.0.1.0.new package. Um, we need to specify the parameter, which is the, <laughs> it, it's, it's the source of where our package is going to be residing. So in our case, it's going to be GitHub. Uh, it's worth noting that there's lots of different sources. I'll post a link uh, in the description where um, Microsoft actually specifies uh, all the potential hosting um, services where all the, the potential services of where you could host your packages if GitHub's not your favorite choice. Um, right, so so here we go. It actually issues a put command. Um, it gives me a warning about not having an API key. I don't care about that because it's a private package. I'm not worried about that at all. The important thing is here that the package was successfully pushed. So great, let's head back to GitHub and let's see if it's done anything. I'm going to click on the packages link and here we go. Um, our package has been successfully uploaded. There's our library full of goodies. What's left is to now consume that package. So let's head back to our actual UI program. And here we want to just go and add a NuGet package like we would any other. If I go and our package is called markinman.com.utility, so I could search for this. Um, and you can see we're not finding anything whatsoever. The reason is, is because this is currently set up to search NuGet.org. We need to go and add our GitHub as a new source, uh, a new source feed. So I'm going to come here to sources. I'm going to hit the plus. Um, name, I'm going to say Mark Inman uh, GitHub Packages. Um, the URL and the login credentials is going to be exactly what we used on in our um, 
config file. So it's going to be this uh, path to the J or this URL to the JSON file, which we're going to stick in here. Our username will be what it was. And the access token will be as such packages. And let's try and do a search for it now. There we go. It's successfully found it, Mark Inman. Now all we need to do is just uh, install it like you would any other NuGet package. First sign, say install. And here we go. It's now recognized this. We can build and run this project. Build succeeded, and there's the output we were expecting. Some sources happened 130 days ago. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. There'll be a link up to my uh, to one of my newest videos, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.